I know we got 550 horsepower, but we're also in my homeland. Not quite. Yes, I come from the Greek islands. My family from Githra. This Crete largest island of Greece. I guess this falls under the heading of we know that it's fast. We already drove this engine in the Panamera. So why don't we just take in the lovely Mediterranean as we drive along the coast of Crete here. But there's that reminder that you could put your foot into it. And oh my God, is it fast. Okay, so the Germans, they call this off-roading. My people, they call this the driveway. Whatever it is, when someone says here, we're gonna give you a $153,000 car, you take it off-road, are you really gonna say no? So with that, let's switch to a gravel off-road setting to give this thing a full shot. Okay, there we are, we're in gravel. And let's, uh, let's give it a little gas on the island of Crete. Now, what you guys don't know is, this is a trilogy of sorts. Uh, for some reason, Porsche, they like us to punish their vehicles. And in the first installment of our trilogy, we took a Cayenne, and I was doubtful back then that it could go off-road to like the back hills of Alabama. Then if that weren't enough, they said, hey, let's try snow and ice, and they flew us to the North Pole. No kidding, the place called Sheleftia, where we drove it on a disused runway and once again blown away so now they say hey you're greek why don't we try the rugged terrain of creep and with that this is where we've got to go back to the whole thing about the weight we talked about in the tech review the weight is down off-roading you want some extra heft to get over places like this and this is what was 143 pounds lower and the first thing you notice is it's still incredibly stable, even though the weight is down. Now, obviously we've got 550 horsepower, 567 pounds of torque, gets out of a situation like that very easily. And it just blows my mind that it's never, when you try to have something be all things to all people, it usually, it's not a good thing. But this is the one instance where it completely defies logic because this is, for all intents and purposes, a tall sports car that is designed to take your Rugrats to a fancy private school very quickly. But in actuality, we've proven this now three times, it really can go off-roading. Not rock climbing, so don't even think about the comments like, oh, it's not real off-roading. Look how credible this thing can be off-road to make it at least put a smile on your face. That's what it's designed for. So in the tech review, I teased you with a forthcoming discussion about brakes. Here we go. Uh, if you are a keen Porsche eye, you look at those brakes and say, white calipers, never seen those before. I've seen the, like the neon, yellow, green, whatever they are on the hybrids. And then there's the yellow, of course, on the carbon ceramic. Now this can have carbon ceramic, but those are not. So you look at them and I'm like, hmm, white calipers and like a funky chrome finish. Uh, it's either something that's been customized by a shop in LA that's run by an ex-NBA or like footballer and probably would kill people because chrome brakes wouldn't work. Or it's a totally new kind of brake from Porsche and that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's a metallic rotor, not carbon ceramic, that has tungsten carbide coating. You heard me correct. Tungsten carbide coating. And there's a couple of reasons the engineers did this. At least they tell me. So number one, you get that chrome finish, which I think looks kind of cool. Uh, number two, they say it's 30% longer lasting. We're not going to get to that in this episode. Number three, they say it's 90% reduction on brake dust. Now, I'm specifically shooting this at the end of the day. I have driven this thing at least 300 miles. And look at this. Nothing. That. As a guy who's OCD and cleans his cars, that I love. Now, they say that there is a performance benefit here. And get this, 10 pistons up front in these calipers, four pistons in the back. So it kind of blows your mind, both from like my OCD and just what the brakes are. Now, it's not all out of the kindness of their heart. It's optional on the base and the S for $3,500, uh, but it's cheaper than 10 grand for the carbon ceramic. Now the question is, how do they work on the road? Just too fancy? Yeah. Okay, 
the first thing you notice besides the flashers coming on like they did in Shaleftia is the pedal feedback is much stronger. It's more, I don't want to say regulated. It feels more confident closer to the composite brakes, but dare I say a little bit more everyday use. So it's really in scenarios like this when we're passing a lovely Greek Orthodox church here, very small churches here I've noticed, that you see the difference or really experience the difference in the PCSB. Because there's no learning curve, like we've talked about so many times in episodes with cars that have carbon ceramic rotors. The basic benefits are sharper braking, you can modulate the pedal a little bit easier, there's more consistent braking, and it's just, it goes with the whole character of the turbo, it's more precise. I don't know how we got here, but once again, we're one of those rare spots where a car, a truck, an SUV, whatever the hell you call this thing that we just drove, I can't pontificate about it. And it's not like the MX-5 RF where I gush over that thing. This, even back to like the first generation, not just the Cayenne, the Cayenne Turbo, these things defy all logic. Hell, they defy the laws of physics. And it's not just that this is a newer, better, faster, sharper version and does a better job of defying all things. It's, look what we did today. And on road to the level that it did that, it shouldn't be able to go off road and do it to that level. It, that's the defying part. You know, here's a better way of putting it. Do you remember back in the day when Apple computers, their basic ones were like three and four times the price of a basic computer? And you piss and moan about the prices today. Well, all that money, it didn't always end up in Steve's pocket. Most of that money went into research and development. So really, add what, $124,000 for the basic one, the way this one sits, 183. It's not money spent to get the fastest baby buggy out there, and it's not to like one-up the Joneses. That money is spent to invest in the research and development department at Weissach. Until I see you next time, bis später. Well, wait a minute, we're in my homeland. So I say Yasu, or depending on when you're uh, watching this, Galadithau.